Welcome to lesson six, drawing and eating food. Here's where we left off. Here's where we're going. Doesn't look much like an apple, but it's a start. I went to search.creativecommons.org and searched for a public domain apple image. And I got this. I cropped it to get just this red apple. And then loaded it into P5.js, into the sketch, and textured a cube with it. We'll probably come back to this and make it look more realistic, but at least it's something. OK, what are we going to do? Here's the new code. Here's a diff with the changes we need. First, we'll add a couple of variables here, food and food image. Food will store the location of the food. This will store the image. Next, we'll create a preload function here that loads this apple ping. Here's the ping. Then in the draw function, we'll call a new function that we'll call draw food. Here's the draw. Here's draw food that we've just added. You can see the things we're adding using these marks. Next, remember in setup state, that's where we reset the game. We initialize the game and reset the game. And when you reset the game, then we're going to place the food in a new position. So let's bring that in and set up state. Here's set up state. Here's the line we added. Now let's make the, the new function new food position. That'll follow the key pressed. So let's find that. Here it is, new food position. What does it do? Cells right of center is, you may remember from before, you take the number of cells per dimension, subtract out the middle one, and go to the right, and that's the number of them to the right of center. It's just useful for doing some of the geometry. We save that in a constant m, just so it'll be shorter. And then we use the random function to give us a random number between minus m and m. So basically, we, this produces coordinates um, that are within the bounds of the arena. And we um, get a random number, which is a real number, and then we round it to an integer. Then we can call create vector using this c function to give us an x-coordinate, a y-coordinate, and a z-coordinate. Next, now when we move the snake, we are going to possibly encounter the food. So let's see what we're adding here. This is the new part here. Okay, so just reminding you how we got here. If we're moving, we calculate the position of the next head of the snake. And if that would take us outside the arena, we reset. Otherwise, now we look and see if the new head position equals the food vector, the, position, the, the vector that contains the position of the food. And if we do, if it does equal, then we find a new food position. Otherwise, we throw away the last segment in the snake. So we keep the last segment in the snake if we've found food. This is what makes us grow. By m in the move operation, we put a new segment at the front and normally drop one off the back to give this apparent motion. But if we find food, then we're going to grow, and we're not going to pop off the last one. 
And then here as before, I say as before, you can see this line hasn't changed. We unshift or put the new head on the front. This is kind of a nice mark here. It's saying that the line hasn't changed other than the indentation. Also, this is nice. If we click here, we can see what, what that used to look like. All right, what's next? Okay, draw snake, draw food. That's a big change there. Let's bring that in and study it. Draw snake, draw food. Here's draw snake, draw food below it. You'll remember we, to draw the snake, we calculate the segment width, which is most of the cell width. And then for each segment in the snake, we draw a box and draw the reference structures. Here in draw food, we turn off stroke because we've got this cube we're going to draw and it's got the texture of the food image on it and we don't want to have lines drawn on the edges of that cube. So no stroke. Texture takes the food image that we loaded in the preload function and says that all subsequent filling will be done using this texture. Um, at, the at the food, turn the food vector into an array, spread that out, so that gives you the first three arguments, which are the location where you're doing this, and then we're going to make a box that's the item width, which here is defined to be 80% of the cell width. And then we call draw reference structures for the food also. So the food also has those, those three perpendicular lines and the kind of planes against the walls. All right, let's run this and just see if we've done what we need to do. So we'll reload. And that works. Great. Okay, let me see if I can catch one. Now, oh, I keep pushing the wrong button for W and S. Okay, here we go. There, food moves to no next location. Go up, left. I'm one too high, go down, left. Get ready to push W now. Got it. There's the next food. Go up. So now we have um, some food to eat, and the snake gets longer. I'll get one more. Go to here, and then S. There. And we're going to get it. Good. Okay. Have fun with that. See you next lesson.